Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Mark Ramsey and we're going to be talking about buying property in a foreign country, specifically buying property in Costa Rica as a Canadian. I'm so excited that Mark's here to share his knowledge with us. Before we get into it with Mark, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Mark, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to join us and talk all about buying property in Costa Rica. Before we get into it, uh, give us a bit of an intro on who you are and what you do as a real estate investor. Um, well, my name is Mark Ramsey. Like I said, I'm from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Um, I've been an IT guy actually for 30 years. Uh, the real estate thing has been more the last eight years or so for me. Uh, started with doing investments in the US. Uh, now I'm doing mostly foreign stuff properties in Mexico, uh, Costa Rica. We're looking at Portugal next as well. So um, trying to get out of the US market as much as possible and uh, look at other options. Um, so real estate investing for me uh, in Costa Rica uh, started about a year ago. And you said you're originally from Vancouver. You've essentially taken your family now and moved permanently to Costa Rica. This isn't you're going down there to spend a couple of weeks for the winter. You actually live in Costa Rica now. That background that you have there is not a live shot, but it is the shot, the view from the place that you're living in right now. Is that correct? It's actually the view from the property that we bought uh, earlier in 2020. Okay, so let's let's talk about that because that's I think it's really interesting for many people that are actually considering this potential move because a lot of us are working remotely now, uh, have the ability to kind of live everywhere. So is that the catalyst for what decided for why you decided to essentially move to Costa Rica? Uh, there's a lot of different catalysts for for the actual move out of the country. Uh, we've been in, we lived in Australia before and we really enjoyed our time there. And we were looking for that kind of a change again, uh, different environment, different experiences. Uh, there's also tax reasons for doing it, uh, lifestyle reasons, cost of living reasons. Um, uh, there's quite a few different reasons for doing a move like this. Why did you choose Costa Rica as, as the location? Uh, a couple different reasons. One, uh, one of the reasons is it's actually the proximity to the US and Canada. So when I do have to go to the US for work, or I do have to go back to Canada for family or work reasons. It's not that far to get there. Um, it's a very stable country politically and economically. Uh, tax structures are fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, immigration is fairly straightforward. Um, the line, there's enough English spoken here that if you're not a Spanish speaker, you can get away, you can get away with it. It's good to learn Spanish and you'll have a great advantage if you do. But you, as, as a new person in the country, you can get away with just English. Uh, and that's not, not so much, say, in uh, Nicaragua or Honduras or uh, Guatemala or anything like that. Uh, Mexico is probably very similar as well, a lot of English there. But uh, mm -hmm. we, we kind of like the lifestyle and the climate and what was it, the type of property we could get and the type of lifestyle we could have. We preferred Costa Rica over someplace like Mexico. Yeah, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time in Costa Rica, and I have to say it's one of my favorite places to, to visit. Um, for, for many of those reasons, but what, um, what is the process? <laughs> How does it yeah. even start if somebody's looking at, okay, I'd be interested in either buying something as a vacation property or buying something to live in a foreign country like Costa Rica. How did you even start that process? Well, about two and a half years ago, we came down here for a conference and there's a, a organization called international living and they put a conference on and it's all about, uh, living and retiring overseas. And we were interested in Costa Rica, so we took advantage of that conference. And it gave us some time to come down here and do a little driving around and checking out a couple of different parts of the country to see what we liked. Uh, we did some property tours down in the area that we're in, which is called Ojo Shell, which is in the Southern zone. And uh, we really, really liked the area, the people, uh, the, the ruralness of it, yet it's close enough to infrastructure and services that we could, that we could find what we wanted. Uh, and then, and then we came back again a year ago for a month and we did a lot of driving around in areas that we hadn't been to before because we wanted to get a feel for the different types of areas in Costa Rica. So we were sure that if we were going to go and buy property in a hotel, that's really where we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and in, in those explorations, we discovered that yes, uh, the climate and the lifestyle and the culture and stuff in this area was where we wanted to go. So that, that, that's really important to do that boots on the ground uh investigation you, you have to go there you have to experience it a bit because visiting someplace for a couple of weeks is infinitely different than living there mm. and, and uh, what we did what i did as well is after we did our touring around a month ago a year ago uh, i came back a couple of weeks later for a week and specifically came back to the ojo shell area and started doing an intensive property search 
And that's where I learned a lot about how you find properties in Costa Rica because they don't have an MLS. Uh, so there's no common place to find this stuff. Um, half the properties around here are not listed on the internet at all. Um, and every broker down here has their own listings and they don't share them. So what you learn very quickly is you've got to come down, you have to find all the major brokers in the area, talk to all of them, get lists of all the properties they have for sale, whether you're looking for a house or you're looking for a lot. And then once you've got all that list together, then you spend several days just driving around looking at all these places. Um, the houses, you'll have to book appointments with the brokers. If you're looking for a built house, you don't wanna go through the construction process. But if you're just looking for a lot, you can generally just get the maps of the areas and go look at the properties yourself. Um, the next part of the process after you've done something like that is now you got to learn the start to understand the processes involved with what it takes to buy a property here, what it takes to build on a property here. And that's where you really start getting into the issues, if you wish, with uh, how to determine if you want a property, yeah, if you want to buy a certain piece of property here. Uh, what you won't find online at all these real estate broker sites. If you're just doing this from home, you're sitting in Toronto and you're on your computer and you're looking up, oh, I want to buy a property in Costa Rica. You can see lots of pretty pictures of probably overpriced properties uh, and you're not going to get the detail you need to make an intelligent decision about it. You need to be here. You need to talk to people, find out what the issues are. Uh, let me give you a couple examples of issues down here. Mm -hmm. uh, the government of Costa Rica a few years ago took over management of all water supplies in the country. So it used to be four or 500 different water associations around the country. So every little community, every little housing project, every little development, everybody had their own water sources and they managed them. And they started having issues in certain parts of the country with lack of water. So the government finally stepped in and said, that's it, we're done, we're taking over everything. Um, so if your development, for instance, hasn't got the approval letter from the government for your water system yet, you can't get a building permit for your property. Hmm. So uh, that was one of the issues we ran into with our property that we bought, but we knew that the water letter was coming. Uh, we didn't count on COVID, unfortunately, because COVID stopped everything dead in its tracks. And so the water letter that was supposed to come for us back in April is now still sitting at the government waiting to come to us. So we can't even get a building permit at this point, but it's fine. We're not ready to build yet anyway, so it doesn't really bother us. But it, it's things like that. that you, have to, um, you have to come here, you have to talk to people talk to property managers, talk to brokers, talk, find out what the issues with um, buying a property is, what the process is. And it's very hard to do that when you're sitting in a, sitting in your bedroom in Toronto, just browsing stuff on the internet. Absolutely. Um, and so when you made the decision to go down, uh, when did you make the decision you were going to build versus uh, buy something that was existing? Because I imagine you eliminate a lot of that when you buy something that is built already. Obviously, the building permit is, is fine and everything's ready to go. But what was the deciding factor of why you chose to build versus to buy? Uh, okay, so we have to take one step back here. The decision we made was pre-COVID. Uh, everything mm -hmm. changed when COVID hit. So all our decisions were based on pricing, the pricing models pre-COVID. So a lot of these areas, um, for instance, we, we, could, we knew we could buy a piece of property, a nice piece of property with a view for about $50,000 US. And I knew that the construction costs were around the $120 a square foot US. Uh, so we started doing a budgeting. Okay, I can buy a piece of property and build a relatively nice house uh, for about $450,000. So then I start comparing that with the houses that I'm seeing and the designs that we like and start looking at those prices. So the, the prices of the houses that were similar to what we want to design and build were five, six, seven, even $800,000 in some cases. And, and so they start looking at it kind of go, okay, well, I can, I can pay a bit of a premium and just move into something, uh, but it's not going to be exactly what we want, or I can spend a little less money, but take the time and, and build our own place. Um, and what a lot of people say about down here too is before you go and buy a place, buying a pre series property is not such a big deal because it's not a huge cash outlay, but buying a house is a big deal. And most people suggest, and we highly agree with this, is come down here, live for a while and rent. And maybe rent for a couple months in one area, rent for a couple months in another area and start getting a feel for how it feels to live in those areas before you make a decision to buy a house there or even maybe even buy a property there. Because we, mm -hmm. we've actually changed our mind about several different aspects of living down here since we've been renting for a month and a half now. So we've actually- And what, and what are those things, Mark? Like what, what have you changed? Well, we have, we're postponing actually building our house uh, because we're finding that what we can rent is, we're, only, we're paying $1,000 a month US 
for a three bedroom house with a pool in a gated community with free internet. And the only thing we pay for is electricity on top of that. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're going, to go, okay, well that's $12,000 a year or I can spend 450 and go build our house. Uh, but I could actually take that 450 now and reinvest it in other real estate projects, make some money off of those, and then maybe take the profits from those and then build our house a couple years down the road. Because mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're more than happy just renting right now. Is there an ability to mortgage anything there as a foreign citizen, or is it something where you have to pay cash outright? Everything down here is cash, unless the seller is willing to do seller financing. Which they'd probably only do on the land and not necessarily on the build, right? You got to pay the builder. Uh, it, like I said, again, COVID changed everything uh, because costs drop substantially here. So houses that were listed for 500 before are now listed for 350 because the owner needs to get out. Um, mm. And you also get the same thing, whereas uh, the owner might not need the cash, but they just need to separate themselves from the house. So they're willing to finance you on a house purchase. Um, uh, we, we can do property purchase with seller financing as well. I have seen uh, examples of that. In fact, I've got one, which we can talk about on another, another show. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there are financing privately. Publicly through the banks, it's just not going to happen here. Uh, if you are a Costa Rican citizen, then yes, wouldn't be that, wouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, but their interest rates are high here. Uh, my understanding is they're 8 9%. So they're, they're not like getting a mortgage in the US or Canada. So generally, you you come down here with cash and that's how you proceed. Yeah, it sounds very similar to my experience in Mexico, or at least the research that I did in Mexico, you can get a mortgage, but yeah, it's a higher interest rate. And um, they're generally, you know, purchased with cash. And that's kind of how you proceed. Yeah, we're actually in the same development. Uh, so mm. uh, I can walk up to our property in about 10 minutes from where we're living right now. So when we do get to the build process, if we're still living in this house, I can keep an eye on the build process because we'll be nice and close. Even, and even, and even if we're in the next development over or, or a couple miles away, it won't matter. It'll still be easy to keep an eye on the, on the process. And what can you expect uh, once you do get that building permit um, in terms of timeline to complete a build in Costa Rica? Depending on the complexity of the build, uh, I think uh, the timeline for our house is going to be about 10 months from the time the building permit gets issued to the time the place is complete. Uh, you have to worry about things like rainy season here when you start your builds. You, you don't want to be starting a build uh, enter, entering the rainy season because literally the amount of water that comes out of the sky here during the rainy season is just unbelievable. You, you want to have a house at least to the point where it's got a roof on it uh, before the worst of the rains hit. So. Yeah, you know, timing can depend on you know when you get to start your project and that kind of thing as well. But ten months is probably a good number for a reasonable house. Mm -hmm. And how are they built? I mean, I imagine they're built from uh, concrete block. Is that is that the base of the of the structure? There's multiple construction techniques down here. I'm a big fan of their concrete block, uh, metal roof. Uh, it's basically kind of a, a stucco film over concrete block. Uh, very very solid. Uh, you're not going to have issues with termites because termites are a big thing down here. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also have other technology. I see, I've seen houses using types, a type of tilt-up construction. So prefab panels that uh, fit in between posts with slots in them. Um, I've, also, I've also seen a lot of uh, metal frame construction here as well uh, with uh, cement board on the outside of the house and cement board yeah. on the inside walls and that kind of thing. Drywall is not a big thing, obviously, just because of the, the moisture content of the air. Mold is a big problem here. Yeah. So we actually have, we actually have one room in the house here with a dehumidifier in it um, that that we keep stuff in it that we don't use very often or doesn't get washed very often like bags and jackets and stuff like that because if you just have them hanging around you'll get mold on everything. And what kind of uh, property like are you renting right now in terms of like how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what are the features of the property versus what you're building or are they very similar? They're a di very different house design. Uh, this is a traditional um, how would you say it um, classical Spanish style house. It's got, you know, all the windows have curved tops on them. It's uh, not a lot, of, no big windows in the house. They're very small, but everything opens up really well. So all the doors are double doors. They all open up, all the windows open up. So you can get some good air circulation during the day. Um, the type of house that we would be, our building is, is a little more, uh, a little bit more modern. Uh, a lot of glass, uh, square windows, everything opens up completely. Uh, and everything down here is tile floor, tile floor, tile or polished concrete floors. Uh, there's no, you don't usually have hardwood in your floors. There's definitely no carpeting down here. 
you don't see linoleum tile or anything like that. That, that stuff just doesn't stand up to the, the environment here. Um, and also as far as features where we are now, so like I said, we have a three bedroom house right now. The bedrooms are all a good size. It's got two nice bathrooms in it, a uh, huge kitchen area and dining and a smaller living area because you don't live inside houses here. Your, your inside space is basically to sleep and to cook. Mm -hmm. And you're, and even, even the cooking is quite often done uh, with ranchos outside where you barbecue and your sink, you have a bunch of stuff outside. We have mm -hmm. a really large covered outdoor deck area. And then there's a pool off of that. And the property is just totally surrounded with lush tropical vegetation. And we get howler monkeys through here. I had two lizards in the pool this morning. Um, <laughs> we get two cans in the backyard and all these other birds. I have no idea what they even are yet. Uh, it's just, it, I was really worried this morning about just the noise levels because sometimes the amount of noise coming in from outside, it, <laughs> at five in the morning, you're waking up because the howler monkeys are howling and the birds are chirping and it's just, it, yeah, it, that, it's a good, that's, that's been a good my problem. experience there too. Yeah, for sure. Like you want to go to bed early because you're going to be woken up by nature early in the morning, but that's kind of the lifestyle there. I find it's a little more get up early, go to bed early. When the sun goes down, if I feel like Costa Rica kind of shuts down almost, right? In, in a lot of ways yes. and people kind of go back to their their homes. Um, but definitely the the animals, the jungles, uh, it, it's really fascinating there. Um, two, two really important questions for you. Uh, one, does Amazon deliver to where you are? And two, where's the closest Walmart? <laughs> okay, closest Walmart is in San Isidro and that's about an okay. hour and a half away. It is the smallest Walmart you'll ever go in. Uh, yeah. and the selection isn't that great. I had to buy a printer. So that was the closest place I could go to find a printer. And, uh, yeah, the selection was pretty pathetic, but, uh, <laughs> and, and it wasn't worth the drive. It was an hour and a half up a windy mountain road stuck behind trucks and it just wasn't worth it. Uh, there is a Costco if you want to go up to San Jose. Well, and there you go. The, the funny part is down here is people, people organize Walmart and Costco runs. So you'll get on one of the local Facebook groups and they'll go, Hey, I'm going up to, San, uh, San Jose for a couple of days. I'm going to be hitting Costco. Anybody want anything? And so you give them a bit of money towards gas and the money to buy the product and they bring it back for you. Um, Amazon does not deliver down here. Uh, the way the shipping services work is you usually work with a, with a shipping company that packs containers in LA or Miami, usually Miami. And so you order Amazon to that and the Amazon gets delivered to them in Florida. And then they pack the containers and then they bring the container down and then you pick it up from their pickup point down here. They mm -hmm. deal with the customs and the duties and all the import costs and stuff. But, so you basically, for a lot of items, you almost have to double the cost of the item to get it down here. Wow. So it, it, you really have to pick and choose what you want to import or what you can find locally. So I do mm -hmm. my best just to find what I need locally. Or when I have to do one of my trips out of the country, I'll usually go back up to the States for business or something and I'll bring a duffel bag with me. And I'll just load it up with all the stuff I've been missing and I just bring it back with me because they don't really, they don't really bother you at the airport too much with customs and duties. So, right. How's, um, uh, you have children, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, yeah. One daughter. And, yes. uh, and is she in school? Yes. So the school year here starts in February. So okay. she's, uh, she's scheduled to go into grade nine here uh, in February. And it's a small private school. It's a English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. So she has some Spanish, but she'll be getting a lot more of it because by her second year, she's expected to take courses in Spanish when she's there. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great little school. It's been around for here for quite a while. And uh, we're looking forward to her going down there and making a bunch of new friends. How was the, the, you know, how was that for her moving to a foreign country, you know, at, at, in grade, grade nine, essentially. I mean, that's a, that's a pivotal, hard. pivot pivotal time in, in a lot of teenagers lives. And was that a hard sell for her? Uh, yeah, it was very hard. And it still is uh, mainly because she hasn't had a chance to go back to school and meet, meet, meet new friends and stuff like that. Uh, luckily in today's age with the uh, social media and ability for have video calls with your friends and do things online with your friends and talk mm. to each other. Well, but no, it, it's definitely hard. It's a lot harder for her than it is for us. Um, how did you guys make that transition and, and what was, you know, the, the biggest challenge from taking your life in BC and transferring it to Costa Rica? Uh, the big thing was the, was the purge uh, because we went from having a 3,200 square foot house full of crap and <laughs> Uh, we did a massive purge and we downsized to a townhouse that we were renting for just over a year before we left the country. And then we did another purge out of the townhouse in the months before we moved again. And we basically got everything down to two pallets full of stuff and which we shipped down here. It's on its way now. 
and some and a couple of bins I left at my mom's place, you know, winter clothes and stuff like that. So when we come back, we have something to <laughs> something to wear if the weather's not nice. Yeah. Um, and we also discovered after all that that uh, we just spent we just paid over four thousand dollars, mostly in customs and duties for those two pallets full of stuff. Wow. The shipping the shipping was only eight hundred and fifty bucks uh, for the two pallets. <laughs> But the customs and duties, I was 850 US, so just over a thousand Canadian for the shipping. Oh, and then over four, four times as much on the duties. Four thousand Canadian, mostly customs and duties. So it really, made, if I'd known that going into it, I think we probably would have been down to one pallet. Yeah. Uh, just because of the sheer cost of bringing stuff in. And you can and what, find everything here. Yeah. And what I was going to ask, what's, what's in that stuff that you couldn't find there? Or, or maybe you would change now that doing that if you had to do it over again? Well, we mostly, we mostly packed up our kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stuff was relatively important, but I mean, we probably could have sold off the dish set and bought something else down here and probably sold off, got not brought up. There's a bunch of stuff we didn't need this to bring. We could have gotten it here. So yeah, it really, you really have to have to analyze what you're, what you're bringing. But Costa Rica is looking at changing the rules on that for, for expats who are moving into the country. They're looking at giving a one-time exemption for import duties and stuff for when they do the initial move which would be really nice. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm a little too early to take advantage of that if it happens, but. What's your biggest um, learning, would you say? I mean, you, you gave great advice earlier on about going down and actually boots on the ground, you know, and if you wanna actually move to Costa Rica or even buy something in Costa Rica, what do you think is the biggest learning that you've had beyond that with your experience of transitioning from living in Canada to living in Costa Rica? Uh, just, uh, they call it Pura Vida here. Uh, and any, anytime things go wrong down here or things take too long, they just look at you and go Pura Vida. And, and, and it's like, relax, take a breath. It'll work itself out. The internet will come back on. The power will come back on. That happens a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if right in the middle of an interview with you, we lose power and internet. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. Uh, yeah. but it, it, it is, it, it's a change in attitude. It's a change in perspective and you can't bring your Canadian or U S attitudes and expectations down here. You have to come down here and experience how they live life and adjust your attitudes and expectations to how they live. We're not here to impose ourselves on the Costa Ricans. You come down here for Costa Rica to impose on you because uh, I feel better. I'm losing weight. I breathe better. I'm going on walks almost every day. Uh, the food is better for you here. It's not processed. You're eating fresh food. We have, we have fresh food deliveries here every week to our, to our, where we're living. Um, just there's so many aspects that in just a month and a half, the benefits of being here. Well, you sold me. I, I'm in. Uh, <laughs> where, where do I sign up? Uh, I think that, you know, it's, uh, I think it's really cool what you've done. And, uh, I, you know, I'm excited to see the progress of, uh, of I know you've got another project. We're going to talk about that on another interview. Um, but I'm also excited to see the progress of your, your build there and see how that progresses. Um, Mark, thanks so much for taking some time to kind of walk us through the process on, on buying and living in Costa Rica. Any final thoughts you want to add? Anything we've missed? I don't know. I just think a lot of people um, are afraid to step outside the box and, and, and do something like this. But with, with the proper, if you have the ability to work online or you have the ability to do, do some side hustles to make some money because you're not back, because you live in a job that maybe you have to physically go to a location to work. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that requirement, if, if you can work remotely and things like that, do the research, look at it. You can do it. It's possible. Um, you know, a lot of people, I think a lot of people are afraid to make that jump. They're, they're just, there's too much fear on their side and you, you got to break through that fear and, and, and live a better life. Mm. Well, I think people will feel a lot less fearful after seeing this interview with you because I think it is an inspiration to anyone interested in making this, this switch. And so thanks for taking some time to walk us through your experience and, and share your knowledge. And I mean, it, you, you can tell, you just, uh, you know, I've been to Costa Rica, uh, spent some time there and it really does. It, it really does feel like you're operating at a different level. And uh, I, 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 that's why I think I've enjoyed it so much there. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed it. 
Thanks so much, Mark, for your time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this session with Mark, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at DarrenWorlis.com. With that, I'll say, Mark, uh, I wish you and your family the best of success on your real estate investing journey down in Costa Rica. And I look forward to touching base with you very soon and uh, checking in on the progress of your new build. Thanks again for joining me and uh, let's, let's keep in touch. Gracias, Darren, and hasta luego.